Good morning and welcome back to Morning Express on this Monday, the 17th of November. It is now 8.42 a.m. and my next guest for the next few minutes is Roman Karaoke, who is the coordinator of FOCUS. Now, FOCUS is an acronym for Families, Orphans and Children Under Stress. Talk about more of what the organization does. Roman, thank you for joining us uh, this morning. Yeah. So, FOCUS, Families, Orphans and Children Under Stress, what is it about? Um, thank you for having me. Uh, um, uh, Focus is a youth organization mm -hmm. that was started by young people who were who were unemployed then. Actually, we had just finished high school and we thought, what can you do? Can we do to actually get a decent income? And actually, we started as a drama troupe where we package a drama presentation, take them to school at a cost so that we can get an income. Mm -hmm. And then by then, HIV was just when was that? That was in 1999. Then at that moment, HIV was declared a national disaster. And then we thought, what can we do as young people so that we can at least uh, sensitize the community mm -hmm. on issues of HIV and AIDS? So we changed uh, from just doing entertainment, then we started doing educative entertainment, where we would package educative messages, take them to school, and then change a the cost. Mm -hmm. And then in the year 2002, uh, we thought we can do more, and then we started an orphan care and support program. Yeah. So that's then we started an orphan care and uh, support program, which is still running up to now. And actually, the children that we started with at that moment, now they're in Form 3, doing okay. very, very well. So a group yeah. of you then decided to come out to do more educational um, uh, kinds of meets and yeah. uh, focus groups. Yeah. Um, how many were you at the beginning? And also just starting off, when, where did you start? Who is uh -huh. it you first you know, sought to target? Oh, good. Actually, that idea came as guys who were in the same school. Mm. We were actually three of us. Then we came up with the idea of having a group, but we recruited other young people. So when we were starting, we were around 10. Mm -hmm. Um, um, then we thought of incorporating more people and then thought of registering as, as an organization so that we can actually reach out to even more people. So actually it was my idea, but you still have a guy that you started with called Hilary Mabubi, okay. whom we are still working together up yeah. to now. Yeah. And you decided focus. So where it, exactly did you start? Where did you start with these um, orphans, with these families and children as mm -hmm. well? Actually we also thought, because initially we started as an educative entertainment, mm. we thought how can we package our organization to reach out to more people. So families, because we do HIV and sensitization, not only to children, but even to the families, because we do HIV testing programs. Mm -hmm. Then orphans, we are very specific to orphans because we pick out the orphans and vulnerable children, then we bring them to a center where we do education support, psychosocial support, counseling and all that. Mm -hmm. And then under stress, you know, when you have a stress or we have, when you have an issue that is really challenging you, it becomes a bigger issue. Yeah. So we are trying to see how can we address some of the issues that are affecting our families. And actually now in our context, we are running two major programs mainly because we cannot be able to do everything. We are running now the orphan care and support program and also we are running youth programming. Okay, so yeah. where is it you operate from? Because is it yeah. countrywide or are uh -huh. you in certain regions? Yes, we are in certain regions. Actually, we are stationed in Wiru. That's where we are running an orphan center. Mm -hmm. That's where the center is located. But now in other programs, we cross-cut counties. Like now we are working in Kiambu, Moranga, and part of Nyeri because we are running a program in school program that you're calling it prepare prepare meaning prepare empower promote enable and achieve mm. it's a program that is targeting primary schools and what you're doing is that you're carrying out skill development because you want young people when they're growing up they have the right skills that they're able to make the right decisions that they're able to grow in the appropriate mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. and we're going to school actually what you're doing is that you're mobilizing the students from universities to be part of interns in our organization we train them as peer educators so that we go to school to school where we do life skill development, we, talk, we discuss issues of decision making, being assertive, service team, setting goals, mm -hmm. and all this as a package. Okay. And the most important part is that we're encouraging Kenyans to go back to their primary school. If you are now a professional as a doctor, mm -hmm. it would be very nice to go back to your primary school and tell these children, I was in this school, I used to sit there and look where I am today. Mm -hmm. That is the approach that you're taking. And in addition to the skill development, we're also supplying sanitary towels, which is a big issue in some schools. Like this year, we've gone for more than 40 primary schools. And also, we also, not only giving the girl child, but also we are also reaching out to the boy child. Because, you know, a boy child is a big issue, especially in central region. And also, when you're giving sanitary towels, 
We also give him boys the pan the inner wears as you also talk about the issues that are affecting the young people. Okay. Because actually if you don't do that, if you don't go back and tell these children probably some of the issues you're seeing happening today, it could be because those children were not they never grew up in the right environment, mm. they never gained the right skills, they never you know, they don't have something that can tell them tell them this is right this is wrong yeah. and that's what you're trying to reach out in, okay. in school well well done mm. and uh, back to the families and also um, HIV which you said from also the very beginning you focused mm. on especially when it broke out as a scourge not only in, in Kenya but also as well around the world and mostly in Africa mm. um, in terms of stigma because that was the biggest issue mm. at the beginning and great mm. fear associated mm. with the same mm. what gains do you think as a group or progress have, has been made over the years up to where we stand now very very true. actually i think mainly i'll talk about the youth because we mm. target mainly youth and hiv and aids we are very good in running programs that are youth oriented and i would say the stigma has gone a bit low but not in totality there's still some element of stigmatization because we will only understand that this stigma doesn't exist the moment someone will go for HIV test and come back home and say, I was tested and I'm HIV positive. Mm -hmm. Just like when you go to a hospital and you get, you have malaria, you yes. come back home and you say, I have malaria or I have cancer. People talk about it. Mm -hmm. But rarely do people get HIV testing, which I'm actually a visiting counselor, so I do HIV testing. When you test somebody and when they go home, they would say, I was tested. That already tells us the stigma is still a bit high mm. because you're worried. When the moment I talk about my status, what will my partner talk, think about me? What will my family think about me? Mm -hmm. What will my neighbor think about me? What will my pastor say about my status? Right. So I think I would say the stigma is, is a bit low. But I would say in terms of HIV infection rate, um, has really gone down. Because I think when it started in the Thika region, because that's where we started operating, the HIV infection was a bit high. But the s latest statistic shows that there is some, a bit of reduction. Though we are now then worried because of, like I'll talk about part of Thika and Riru, there's a lot of young people who are coming to those areas. We are seeing a lot of intake of EPIL. We're hearing a lot of abortion cases. And what is telling us that if these people are using EPIL, especially like today, I know it's on a Monday, so mm -hmm. I know a lot of guys <laughs> will be buying them. What is telling us that they never used protection, mm -hmm. and that's why they are buying EPIL. So that's already a big issue. And you're worried yeah. that the uptake of EPIL goes on and on, then we are seeing an instance where we'll have high infection rates among the youth. And I think uh, the latest information was telling us that there are um, higher, uh, there's some increment mm -hmm. in new HIV infection among the youth, especially at the age of 15 to 24. Yeah. yeah. Let's also talk about the orphans. And mm -hmm. what are some of the issues that present themselves with these children that have been left by their parents? Um, what are some of those issues that you need to talk them through to help them out on that you mm -hmm. find that uh, most of them will suffer from? I think one of the, one of the biggest challenge is helping children understand what is HIV. Mm. And you know you cannot uh, talk about HIV without talking about sex and sexuality. It's a big issue, right. especially in our context. Talking about sex and sexuality, it's a big issue in, 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 in today's life. Mm -hmm. But I think orphans are facing very big challenges. In a scenario where um, the father is gone, the mother is gone, mm -hmm. the children are left alone without anyone to take care of them. They become the head of household. Where you're left alone, so you're heading a family. And maybe you're in primary school. You've seen a scenario where someone is in primary school, you have a three or four more children that you're mm -hmm. taking care of. It becomes a very, very, very big challenge. That is one. Two, I think even psychological effect. Living in an environment where every other child is talking about my dad and my mom, and you, you have no one to talk about. It's, all, it's already traumatizing. Mm. Another issue is that not everybody is willing to take orphans. And actually, I would actually even, Wanuna, when you think the word orphan, what comes in your mind? Mm. A vulnerable children, a helpless child, you know? Those are some of the things that we come and we think about. So we are not able to bring them on board so that we can support such children. I actually say, alleviating an issue of orphans and vulnerable children in Kenya today, it is not a big issue. It's a very simple issue because I'm very sure last night there's a lot of guys who left food that was not taken True. that could have gone to orphans. It will check on your wardrobe. There are so many your children for your children yeah, yeah. that maybe they never use them. You can give them to children. The education is free, primary education. The needs are more uh, minimal. So I'm thinking if youth, like what you've done, 
currently we are supporting 60 children. We are supporting 11 in high school, and we are not. We don't have a don't actually rely on individuals. A youth comes in, adopts a child, and pays school fees. We hustle for bursaries so that we can get these children go in school. Then the issue we're talking about orphans who are around 1.5 million. If you share among us our families, that is there would be no need of having orphan centers. It's a problem that you can sort out mm. within within a day. Okay. So I think they are facing a lot of challenges. That even from the thinking, even stigmatization. We actually, even when you go to a school and you say, mm -hmm. what you end up and yeah, that's already stigma. Yeah. Because yeah, you're already putting them so aside. You know, you're discriminating. Them like that. Yeah, you actually even go thinking you're helping, but actually you're traumatizing yeah. them. Okay. So I think they're facing a lot of challenges. But you're trying to see what can we do to actually address some of those challenges that they're facing. Okay. Yeah. So are these the same issues when you also focus the touches of children under stress? Yes. Are these the, also the stresses that you are capturing in the um, acronym of your organization? Yes. yes. Actually, we are addressing uh, in our program, there's some uh, programs and orphan can support program that you do. One is education support, making sure they go to school so they have uniform uh, and all that. We talk about livelihood. We are now we reach out to their guardians, so we do food rations, so that we take food. Because in our center, we only take one child per family. So there's other orphans that are not mm. able to come to our center. So we give them food so that they can be able to, uh, to sustain themselves. Then we have the psychological bit. And how we do it is that um, we usually organize for games, because games are the best approach yes, to yeah. teach a child. And actually, ours, we do it in a very unique way that you do every month. We usually have an event that we call the Chapati Forum, mm -hmm. which is now very famous. Chapati Forum is a scenario where we call all the orphans and vulnerable children, mm -hmm. and then we call out the young people in the community, plus the leaders, and then we make so many chapatis <laughs> that the children just eat and they watch. That's a very way of letting children open up because they're already happy. Yeah. The moment you promise them so chapati. chapati. And, yes, uh, and there are some of the chapatis, we yes. see some of the pictures. Yes, yes. enjoy, yes. Uh -huh. Chapati Forum, they have fun, enjoy, and then later we usually have games. Through the games, they're able to, we're able to set them in small groupings, mm -hmm. and then we have games that are educative that you'll have a game, then at the end of the day we ask them, what have you learned about the game? Then I'll say, I've learned that I need to be persistent, I need to be honest, mm -hmm. I need to be hardworking, I need to have someone to support me, you know, they're able to learn those skills practically. Wow. So that's how we do it, um, that. Then of course, um, I talked about the psychological, the livelihood, mm -hmm. the nutritional in our center, mm -hmm. we make sure they eat so that we know Actually, when you're hungry, even if you go to school, you'll not get anything. You'll mm -hmm. be asking, when will be the next break? You know, so that you can grab something. So we're also trying to do the nutritional support. Okay. And then, of course, the emotional support, just making sure they are there, the social support, knowing that there are some people that I, when I talk to, they will actually support with what I need. With what you need. Yes. So you currently have 600 children under your care. Yes. In our center, we have 60. In 60. Our, in our center, those report every day. We make sure they get the support that we need. Okay. But now we have others that we support in school because mm -hmm. we are located in Weiru, but you have other children that are in other schools. So what we do is that every year we, give a, we do a program that we call backpack program mm -hmm. where we give them bags, and then make sure you have supply for books and pencils that is continuous. Wow. And then we make sure that every, we usually have now the prepare program, which is a, a continuous program mm. for mentorship and life skill development that you mm. go to different primary schools on every other day. Every other day. Yeah. So what drives you, Roman? What is it that keeps you doing this um, year in, year out? Because uh, you say you don't have sponsors. It mm. is about hassling here and there yes. and using your own resources as well. Yeah. What is it that drives you? I, I think the best um, gratification that someone gets is when you get someone uh, from one level to another mm. through a success story. Like today, now that the schools are closed, when I see the 11 girls who are in high school and all of them are in boarding school who are performing very well. Mm -hmm. Actually, they are in very good. We have some in Keriko girls, Komodai girls, mm -hmm. Loreto Kiambu, which actually is a sponsor of Wings to Fly program yes. of equity. Such when we see those children together, and then you see where you brought them. Usually I do actually a picture story, telling them, do you remember yourself when you were there? Now you're here, now you're there. That's already, a you feel satisfied yeah. by what you're doing. When you prepare a chapati forum, which you just mentioned, actually you fundraise via Facebook and, uh, and guys come in. When we see 100 youth making chapatis, and we make even 600 chapatis, mm -hmm. at the end of the day you feel satisfied. 
when you pull someone from one level to another, that is actually a fool you feel satisfied. Mm. Whether you don't have anything in your pocket, but you're sure that someone else is thinking about you mm. and you've brought them from one level to another. And you when make you an investment and in you their make, lives. Actually, I tell people the best investment that you can ever do in this world is social investment. Okay. Where you know, Roman, when he's having a problem, you have a thousand people who will be there yeah. to support you. I think that is the best investment. Because actually you can actually have a lot of money, mm. but then you feel you are alone. But now when you have people who are surrounding you right. all the time, they're there to support you, they constantly follow you. You know, they actually sometimes they receive a call, I've just brought a bail of unga, I've brought, I've paid the school fees, that is usually an excitement. Because actually if we never started the Orphan Can Support program, yeah. then where would these 60 children be? Yeah. Even those who are in Form 3 now in Komodai Girls, where would they be today? So people watching this morning would like to either start such initiatives in their regions or mm -hmm. support you. Mm -hmm. How do they get in touch with you? Um, they can actually get in touch with through our social media. We are very active. You can actually follow Roman Karyuki on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Also Focus Youth Initiative on Facebook. You can follow that. We also have our website a underscore focus dot org you okay. can actually follow what you, what we are doing on uh, those lines mm -hmm. uh, and i think we'll be more than glad actually the best one of the issues that i'm telling guys is go back to your primary school yes. i was in my primary school last month right. and i was taken by i had a lot of people who took me to my for my primary school and you know when you were there and you tell those children i was sitting here mm -hmm. And, and this out. was my teacher. Mm. And when I was here, I was not wearing shoes like you are wearing shoes. And look where I am today, what I've been able to achieve. That is the best thing. Mm. When and I want they see, they can visualize. Yes, can yes. Actually, can have that vision we went, and see. We went, this is where potentially I could yes. get to. And actually, they can actually even understand, especially for those who went, went to school in rural areas like me. I was in Gatondo, somewhere in Gatondo North, mm. in a primary school, Kaifere Primary School. If I went there and you ask children, who do you want to be? I was shocked. There's a child who is saying, I want to be a security man, because that is what they see. Mm. They don't know that there's a doctor. They don't know there's a presenter. They don't know there's a news anchor. They don't know that there's even a musician who can actually make it. If you go back there and tell them, or even a social worker like I am, tell them, I was in this school, I am now a social worker. Mm. Let them not just say, I want to be a pilot because that's what they hear. Mm. I want to be a doctor because that's what they there hear. But they don't aspects. understand. There are so many other aspects that okay. actually can actually touch lives and transform our country. All right. Finally, what is in the future? What is in the works? Where do you hope to see focus in the next five, ten years? I'm hoping to see focus growing in terms of touching different parts of this country, mm. being able to recruit more young people to get into community work. Because actually, I usually say, Manuna, it's not that there are no jobs. The jobs are there. Mm. Actually, when you move out of this building, you can see something that you can do. That's still a job opportunity. What is not there is someone to pay you to do that work. Yes. That's what you don't have, people who are able to pay. But actually, the job opportunities are there from farming, cleaning, you know, all those jobs. There's job always something, there's always something that someone can do to earn a decent income. And actually, that's what I've learned that I started then, today, I usually get, even if I'm doing all that work, because I also need to survive. I get a lot of work in terms of trainings. I do a lot of trainings mm. for the youth people, for the young people. And I, I think I get those opportunities because of what I've done. What you've done. People have seen me talking to them when I'm not charging anything, but they will call me to pay me because they've seen me doing it for free. Now wow. I'll be called to go for a training when I get my own income. So my challenge to the young people is that do something. Mm. Don't say that there's nothing that someone can do. There is always something that you can do. And the hardest part is the starting point. Yes. But the moment you start it, everything else will roll. And Excellent. you'll have people who will support you. Especially if the idea is good, it's objective, and people it's for the good will. Of and it's for the good of the community, yes. people will be there. Support you. Like even today, maybe to mention something, last week when we were doing um, one of our program in primary school, I met border border operators. Mm. They know me, especially in Ruiru, they know me as a youth leader. Right. So they told me next month, and I, that's something I would encourage the young people also to do, on 27th of this month, we are calling the senior citizens of Ruiru residents who are 70 years and above, and we want to give them a Christmas party mm. donated by Ruiru Motorbike Association. 
the border border guys they said we'll raise 300 each and we some. call the senior citizens right. in a stadium and then you give them a package okay. if you never initiated that probably they could not have done what, yeah. what you what you Roman to. Karaoke, you're doing such a splendid job thank we you. laud you thank keep you. at it helping especially when you talk about those vulnerable groups the children the orphans yeah. encouraging them helping them see that there is hope despite mm. what their past has been That's where true. they may be in life that really it can get better for them yes. keep up the good work and thank we cheer you, you on as you continue and all the best thank you uh, love and greetings to the children i will do that yeah that's roman karaoke who's the coordinator of focus which is full for families orphans and children under stress talking to us about some of their work um, which is great just giving back to the society and i like what he says encouraging everybody that you cannot say you don't have something to do you can always do something even if it is not to earn a living for now give back to the community in one way or another it in one way or the other will end up opening other avenues like it has happened in his case to actually make some money as well thank you for watching the show always great to be with you on behalf of all that made the show possible we wish you a lovely monday and let's do this all over again tomorrow bright and early